From the pit to the palace, from certain death to abundant life, Joseph, the patriarch who pictures Messiah. Zola Levitt presents Joseph, Dreamer, Redeemer. Shalom and welcome to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss, and we want to welcome you to Joseph, Dreamer, Redeemer. You know, Joseph is one of the most perfect pictures of the life of Yeshua. It's really true. You know, we've seen in the series so far that both Joseph and Jesus were beloved of their father. They're both shepherds. They both were sent to their brothers. They were rejected by their brothers. Right. And now we're about to see Joseph become a key player in the redemption of the Jewish people and also the known world at that time. Yeah, a Hebrew was sent by his father hmm. to be the bread of life. Hmm. You know, it, it says in Psalms 105:17 that he sent a man before them hmm. and that he would be able to preserve them. You know, and sometimes it comes into our life a dream or a word and it feels like it's this most amazing thing is going to happen. But before that, there's the trying mm -hmm. of the person. And that's what happened to Joseph. He, yeah. The word of the Lord tried him mm -hmm. until it was the appointed time. Well, that's really true. And we see this parallel also in the Hebrew language. It says, La'asot retzcha Elohai chafatzti, which means I delight to do your will, O God. And Joseph, while going through these trials, is going to wind up doing the will of God, just as David's greater son, Yeshua, will do the will of God as well to redeem the whole world. So let's pick up our story right now as Joseph goes to Egypt. The caravan of traders was bound for Egypt with Joseph in tow. His jealous brothers had reasoned it was a good way to make some money and rid their family of this crazed dreamer. It would be a long journey from the green pastures of the patriarchs to the foreign sands of the Pharaoh. Once in Egypt, Joseph would once again be sold, now to be a slave of Potiphar, the captain of Pharaoh's guard. The story of Joseph is such a story of the struggle between good and evil, and it's such a picture of Yeshua as a young man, as the suffering servant, and then it will become the story of the, the coming king, the ruling king. You know, there's a conspiracy that we've been seeing here. The brothers have conspired against Joseph. They've thrown him in a pit, and it really parallels the conspiracy in Matthew 12, 14, where the Pharisees came to Yeshua and tried to trick him. But you know, there's even an earlier one. I mean, how did Joseph get down here to Egypt? They they sold him into slavery. He was put in a pit. He was sold to the Ishmaelites who brought him to Egypt. And you know, it's interesting, Catherine, that the, the Bible tells us that when Yeshua was a baby, mm -hmm. his parents had to take him down to Egypt mm -hmm. in order to avoid the, the Herodian mm -hmm. mandate to kill every baby under, mm -hmm. under two years old. And so the, the, the son comes up out of Egypt, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. son of God. And so, so it is with the son Joseph, the son, he's going to come up out of Egypt as a ruler. You know, Egypt figures so importantly in the history of Israel. In fact, the future of the area yes. includes a highway of holiness in Isaiah 19 between Egypt, Assyria, and Israel. And so here we are in Egypt as Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers and then sold to the Ishmaelites and then sold to the Egyptians. These brothers were so full of hate towards their brother that they almost killed him, but thank God they decided to throw him in a pit. Mm. You know, the 20 shekels is not by accident. It says in Leviticus 27 that there's a special vow that is given for 20 shekels. And you know, they thought that they were selling him off, mm. but God was ransoming Joseph for a purpose, and a purpose that was beyond him. That's really, it is amazing. There's a vow of consecration in Leviticus 27 that speaks about different ages of people that are being consecrated to the Lord and the valuation that they're to be paid to the temple for their consecration. And so here we have Joseph being sold for 20 shekels, which is the exact amount 
that someone of his age would be valued at. And so the brothers think they're getting rid of him. But really, if you look at it from God's point of view, God is saying, okay, you're consecrating him to me, and I'm going to have my way in yeah. his life. And that's, that is really a lesson for us. Mm. When people do us wrong and even would throw us in a pit, wow. God has a plan to redeem us and to bring us into our destiny if we keep trusting him and not turn our back on That's him. That's good. There's such a conspiracy here. The brethren are just like the Pharisees will be with Jesus conspiring, just like Herod conspiring to kill the babies of, of Israel and they have to go to Egypt. Mary and Joseph has to go, have to go to Egypt and now here he's coming up out of Egypt. Joseph's words were disbelieved. They just didn't believe his words, the dreams that God gave him, just like when Yeshua was speaking and the Pharisee would say, well, if you're the son of God or if this or that, and they would dispute what he was saying. And it's just such an amazing parallel because the, the brothers did not want to do the dirty work themselves. And so they, they settled on selling him to the Ishmaelites, just as Yeshua was sold off to the Romans by the Jewish brothers. And so we see this, mm. this, uh, this secret history with God is building mm. in Joseph's life. He's about to be made yeah. a servant. And we remember that Yeshua is spoken of in that way. In fact, Philippians 2 tells us, let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Messiah Yeshua, mm -hmm. who being equal with God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, and yet right. made himself of no reputation right. and was obedient even to death, even the death of the cross. Right. And therefore, God has exalted him with the name above every name. Yeah. You know, we have to go through the pit sometimes yeah to get to the palace. And we're seeing that in Joseph's life, yeah. and we're going to see that paralleling the life of Yeshua as well. Our offer on this program, Zola Levitt's booklet, The Seven Feast of Israel, as well as the popular companion booklets, the Miracle of Passover, the Crown Jewel of Biblical Feast, and A Christian Love Story, a beautiful story of the wedding customs of Israel in Messiah's time. As for the Feast Package, you'll find these booklets to be striking examples of the types and shadows of the Messiah, Yeshua. Information well worth knowing. <laughs> Joseph does well in the house of Potiphar. His master sees that God is with this young man from Canaan because all that Joseph did worked for the good. So Potiphar makes Joseph his personal aid, overseer of all his affairs. And from that day forth, God blessed the home and all the fields of Potiphar. Joseph is brought into Potiphar's house as a servant, and everything he puts his hand to prospers. And in fact, he's, he's known and noted as someone right. who has just done those wonders for the house of Potiphar. No matter what he did, I mean, he says even in the field or in the house, whatever. And I think of that, uh, that scripture that God will cause us to be blessed when we're, you know, even in our fields and our baskets will be overflowing because he did not turn his heart away from the Lord mm -hmm. and he turned it towards God and the dream that God had given him despite what he was facing, mm -hmm. despite what he had overcome, he kept on going. And I think he might have even had to lay everything down and just say, you know, God, I'm in this house and whatever I do, I'm going to give you glory. Mm -hmm. So we, we learn the favor, you you know, he increased in favor, just like Jesus increased in favor. Yep. And just like us, God wants to pattern us as the same, the same as jo Jesus and Joseph. Yeah, that no matter what the circumstances, that we can cause others to prosper and we will prosper there as well. It reminds me of the scripture in Isaiah 52, 13 that speaks about the Lord's hand was on Yeshua. That even going up to Isaiah 53, when it'll be crushed, at the cross, there's something about it that pleased the Father and pleases the Lord in that servanthood. Right. What happens is he's in the suffering, but now he's in prosperity. Mm -hmm. He's in Potiphar's house. He's blessed. Everything he puts his hands to is blessed. And he is a handsome man, it says, from mm -hmm. in his face a, and a in goodly, his features. It says a goodly man. A in face the and features, yeah. yes. Yeah. And so Potiphar's wife takes a look at him and says, I want you. Oops. 
And that is what happens. And that's what happens so many times in our life mm. when we are elevated to a place of authority mm. that the enemy wants to come in right. through the eye gate right. or through the, the, the lust gate yes. and wants to pull down the yeah. purpose. Yeah. And, and thanks be to God that caused jo Joseph mm -hmm. to be able to be steadfast and to leave his cloak behind yeah. as she tempted him. Yeah, she's trying to seduce him. Yeah. And in that seduction, he acts righteously and it reminds me again of Yeshua who was tempted in all things yet without sin. Mm -hmm. And Joseph acts that way. He acts in a righteous manner. He flees youthful lust. He's careful not to have anything to do with her. And then he is, like Jesus, falsely accused. Right, right. And thrown into the pit again in Potiphar's pit. But God has a plan there. Yeah. And we start to see the beginning of this crown making taking place. Remember, he goes from his family, the patriarchs, into the pit, then to Potiphar's house, and now he's going to go back to prison, and there's more to come. But you know, an interesting thing that also parallels Jesus is that Joseph did not defend himself. Just as Yeshua stood before Pilate, stood before hard. Herod, and, and like a lamb to the slaughter, he yeah. did not defend himself. He just let this unfold. Can you imagine right. being able to do that? It's hard for me to imagine, but he did not defend himself and he allowed it to become what it needed to become. And it's, this is amazing to me, but the word for overseer, because he became the overseer of everything that Potiphar had, all of the prosperity that he brought to Potiphar, that word overseer is just one Hebrew letter away from Mashiach. And so there's a connection between the anointed one mm -hmm. and the one who's in charge of someone's household. And so now we see Joseph is going into prison and our story continues from there. Israel is a land of God's covenant. You know, when you go to Israel, it's not just a vacation. It's a pilgrimage to know your inheritance and your family's inheritance in Yeshua. It's, it's amazing. We invite you to come with us and you can learn more about our tours through the Levitt Letter. Not only is there wonderful articles written here, but you can learn about the tours and pray into if God would have you join us in a tour. It would be our delight to have you. That's great. You know, we love hosting people in Israel. And I really like writing for the Levitt Letter. I'm always impressed to hear that people are sharing it. It's getting out beyond our subscription level and it's free to you. Just get in touch with us. We'd love to send it to you. Joseph is about to be tested again by the word. You know, scripture says in Psalm 105, the word of the Lord tested mm -hmm. him. And that's what we're seeing happen. And he's going to come up as a righteous man. We're right. going to see righteousness in him that is arising. It reminds me of the Shabbat service where, where I will speak pray Proverbs 31, a virtuous woman over you, and you'll pray Psalm 1 over Absolutely. me, that I would be a man who doesn't walk in the counsel right. of the ungodly. Right. Joseph is going to exemplify that. Yeah, and it goes on in, 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 that, in that very Psalm, and it mm -hmm. talks about that that man will prosper. Mm. And because of his commitment to God, yes. you know, whatever God gave him, whatever came against him, mm. God caused him to prosper. It also says that, you know, Miles, that in Potiphar's house, he, he rose like cream. You know, mm. it's not what comes at you, right. but it's how, how we respond to it. Yeah, and you know, that word is controversial. We want you to understand we're not speaking about some magical prosperity. We're talking about a disciplined, oh, no. godly yeah. way of succeeding because of doing things God's way, right? Well, absolutely. And that's what Joseph exemplifies. It reminds me of the... Uh, one of the things that happens in this passage that's a slight departure from the parallels between Joseph and Jesus is that when Joseph was tested by Potiphar's wife, as we'll see, the garment was left behind. But when Jesus was tempted by Satan in Matthew 4.10, Satan went away. And so we see the difference of scope there between the human and the divine. Well, let's pick up our story 
as Joseph continues his life in Egypt. <laughs> Despite God's blessings, there was trouble brewing in the house of Potiphar. Potiphar's wife had taken a peculiar liking to Joseph, but so far, he had refused all of her coy invitations. Perhaps she thought to herself, this time it would be different. But once again, Joseph refuses to violate Potiphar's trust. He would not sin against his God. Enraged by yet another rejection, her screams summon a nearby guard who pursues Joseph and throws him into jail, where he joins other prisoners from Pharaoh's court. Joseph is in prison. And even in prison, after he was tempted but was without sin, just as Yeshua was tempted but without sin, 1 John 3, 5, and Hebrews 2, 18, we realize that there's not one word in the Torah spoken against Joseph. And that's phenomenal because the patriarchs, let's face it, our family line, our family history is full of mishigas, full of craziness. There's difficulty, there's sin, there's ups and downs, but Joseph has a pretty good report, doesn't well, he? Well, God has a plan and he's going to use Joseph as a type of Jesus. And that's what we've been saying. And what we want to also convey is that the Lord, through his grace, can give us that same testimony through the power of our Messiah. Yeah, you know, I keep harping on this, but the truth is that, you think about this, I believe Potiphar, understood that his wife was trying to entrap Joseph because it really parallels what Pilate did. Pilate said, I find no fault in this man, and yet he handed him over because he just wanted to get rid of the problem to save face. I think Potiphar was in a similar position. Well, he could have killed him right at that moment, but he didn't kill him because I think there was some loyalty there. He just simply put him in a prison and put him in a prison for two years. And then these two boys, two, these two men come with yeah. the, the baker and the butler. Yeah, the butler and the baker come in. And think about this, in the pit, in the prison, Joseph, even in the prison, he wins the respect of the jailer. The jailer is... Uh, the jailer's testimony is that this is a man that I can put in charge of all the other prisoners. It's hard to imagine this kind of integrity, this kind of wonder that this Joseph is growing in stature and favor with God and man. And he wins the respect of the jailer. And it reminds me again of the New Testament, where the centurion at the cross says, truly, this was the Son of God. Mm -hmm. There's something about the recognition of spiritual authority, the recognition of the anointing that's on Joseph, mm -hmm. and that is on, of course, Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing these parallels, and the butler and the baker are put into prison, and the story is going to lead us into a hope so that they will stand for Joseph, that they will bring his testimony before Pharaoh. We're gonna see how dreams got Joseph into this situation and dreams will get him out. That's good. Joseph is the dreamer. He is the dreamer who dreams big dreams that are beyond his ability and God is going to give him authority over the entire known world at the time. And again, a parallel with Yeshua who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Melech Hamlachim Adonai Adonai. He is the suffering servant Messiah ben Joseph, who is returning as Mashiach ben David. And the story of Jesus is those two parts of who he is and one identity are, are both true. That he has come as a suffering servant to die in our place, but he's returning as the lion of the tribe of Judah. In Canaan, he had been despised and rejected by his brothers. He had been sold to the Ishmaelites, sold again to the Egyptians. And now this, would the God of his fathers show mercy? Could justice be served within the stone walls of an Egyptian prison? For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, 
ask for our free monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com, you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Hi, you know, a good question to ask yourself might be, where else can you find solid Bible teaching regarding prophecy for these last days? Well, Zola Levitt Ministries has been doing exactly that for more than 35 years and will continue with your support. Your gifts of financial support is what enables us to do this. We want to remind you there's three ways, online, through the mail, or just give us a phone call. And thank you. You know, the Bible is full of instruction for us on how to live our life in our current circumstance. Mm. No matter where we're at, if it's a good one or if it's a bad one, he gives us his wisdom. And, you know, I think more and more about the life of Joseph. God can give us so many chances to relate to him. You know, mm. we might not have been sold into slavery or, um, you know, offered up as on the trail to go, go on down to Egypt, you know, sent, sent by his brothers but we might have been betrayed mm -hmm. by somebody that's been very close to us, mm -hmm. somebody that we've held dear. Yes. You know, it's, it's harder to overcome that in a way, but we can gain strength that the Lord said that he will help us to overcome and to forgive those that have betrayed us. Yeah, and we do see that played out in the life of Joseph yeah. over and over again. And uh, it's instructional for us. Right, you know? I know I've had a close friend my, in my own life betray me. And it's not until you see that, you know, they might have meant it for evil, but God's going to use it for good because He is working His character in us. He's mm. working His love in us. And it's that love that flows through us when we that's can good. forgive. Yeah, it's really good. We were made into a, Yeshua's likeness and image every time we forgive. So uh, we, we're going to hear a great message from Eitan Shishkov. He is a leader in the Messianic movement in Haifa and throughout Israel and the world. He is the leader of Tents of Mercy Ministry and has a very widespread touch with the Israelis. So let's go to Eitan right now. The life of Joseph provides us with some fascinating parallels with the nation of Israel. Uh, I'd like to touch on some of those parallels in the time that we have together. Uh, from the, the Torah, the books of Moses, all the way through the prophets, uh, we see that God's promise is to Israel for, for blessing and for multiplication. We begin to see that all the way back in uh, the book of Genesis where God promises Abraham that he will become the father of many nations and that God will make him exceedingly fruitful. On into the prophetic books uh, that speak about the destiny of Israel, uh, as a people in the land of Israel, and uh, that even after exile we will return and, and God will place a blessing upon us, even eternal blessing. In the life of Joseph, we, uh, we see this promise early in his life, and interestingly, we're also going to be talking about the fact that that promise is delayed. There's an exile, just as in the life of Israel. So uh, what I want to uh, uh, really focus on right now is this concept of prophetic promise, uh, which is so clear both in the life of Joseph and in the life of Israel. Um, the, the scriptures are, are very strong in the fact that uh, there's a parallel between Jesus, Yeshua, and uh, Israel uh, in where Hosea says, out of Egypt I have called my son. And uh, what God is saying here is, both for Israel, uh, Israel will come out of Egypt as a people, uh, and Yeshua, who was taken to Egypt by his parents and then brought back. This is also true of Joseph, uh, because we see in Genesis 39, it says Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Of course, he was only taken back <clears throat> to the promised land uh, in the form of his bones. But there's a, there's a beautiful repetition and a beautiful rehearsal here, uh, which really helps us to understand the purposes of God. And in fact, uh, that's what I believe the story of Joseph will help us to see the history of Israel uh, in miniature, in a condensed form. And uh, I look forward to uh, bringing the next episodes uh, where we will speak as the history of Israel unfolds, reflected in the life of Joseph. 
Our brother Eitan does such a wonderful job of creating an overview of the making of a man of God, mm -hmm. how it parallels not only the restoration of the life of Israel, but also for us individually, how we are brought into Yeshua's likeness and image by the things that we suffer, by setbacks that we have. I know for, for us that uh, I've had many, many years as a counselor, right. as a licensed therapist, and, and helping people to find that way of turning their difficulty, turning their suffering right. into something beautiful that God can use. Uh, it's one of the great joys of our lives. Right, and the, it's the Word of God that helps us through these times. And it says, again, it says, the Word of God tried Joseph mm. until he came up, you know, he was in the pit, he's in the prison, mm. and we know he's going somewhere, just like you are in your life. You know, you might feel like you're in a pit, mm. or you might feel imprisoned, or mm. you might even feel like your feet are shackled, mm. but you are going somewhere. God has a destiny for you. He has a plan. And not only in this life, but in the life to come, there will be so much amazing joy mm. as we go through those pearly gates. Mm. I can't, I, you know, I can't wait, but I know I have a purpose here. And that goes for you too. So when we go through the, the valley, mm. let us remember that God is with us. Mm -hmm. It's really true. Think about this, that, that, that Joseph even had someone like Potiphar, who, whose legal right it would have been to have him killed. Right. Just as Pilate could legally have Yeshua killed, right. but both of them had this doubt because of the righteousness they saw. Think about Potiphar, wow. instead of killing Joseph, right. put him in prison, which is terrible, but right. not as bad as death. And Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. Mm. Pilate had that same doubt as well. Right. There's this uh, understanding that we're looking at something that is touched by God. Mm -hmm. And they, these, both those uh, leaders had their doubts about the punishment, but things played out the way they played out. Thank God that Yeshua voluntarily went to the cross for your sin and my sin. Absolutely. Especially my sin. And so we're <laughs> grateful to the Lord for providing salvation for us. We always like to end our program by saying, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries.